It's time to build the actual rocket. Included in your Signal Alpha kit are two guides. One is for the thrust vectoring mount, the other is for the flight computer. These guides will help you make cuts, incisions, and drills in the right places. To get started, we'll need a hobby knife, some painter's tape, and of course, your rocket airframe. To start, we'll peel off some tape and rip it into many smaller pieces. Then we'll take the TVC cutout guide and we'll wrap it all the way around the airframe. What we want to make sure of is that the bottom and top of the paper are in line with each other so that when they overlap, the sides of the paper are totally parallel, like so. It's also a good idea to grab your TVC mount here and line it up with the red dots around the airframe. This is where it's going to be mounted on the rocket. This should give you a good sense of where your motor will sit once it's in the rocket. Place two pieces of tape where it says tape to vehicle here, and then we will do just that. This paper doesn't have to be lined up with the bottom of the vehicle, but I find it's a helpful place to start when building your first vector thrust rocket. Once the paper's taped to the vehicle, wrap the far side around it, and now it's time to make sure it's all lined up. Look closely through the paper. You should see a line that lines up with all three ticks on the top, middle, and bottom of the paper. Once those are lined up, you can go ahead and tape it down. Since you are about to make these cuts, it's a good idea to check one more time where the TVC mount will sit. Some motors are longer than others and may hang out the bottom of the rocket. You really don't want this if you don't have something to block it when it hits the ground, because if so, all of the stress of the impact will go into the TVC mount. By loading a motor into the mount, we can simulate where it will sit in relation to the rocket before actually making these cuts. If you're not satisfied with where it is, you can line it up differently and repeat the steps before. As a rule of thumb, I usually try to have the motor hang out to about the bottom of the airframe. That's a good way to mitigate the stress on impact. Once you're satisfied with where the motor sits, you can tape the rest of this paper down. You really don't want it to move around too much, so you can be kind of generous with the tape here. After this, we'll repeat the same process with the flight computer guide. Now the most important thing here is that we line up these little blue numbers. 2 and 2 here should always be in line, along with 1 and 1, 3 and 3, and 4 and 4. In the same manner as the TVC mount, this can actually go anywhere on the rocket, up or down. As long as these numbers are in line, you'll be good to go. Like before, Add the tape where it says tape to vehicle here, and wrap it around the rocket. Just like last time, we're looking to see that line through those ticks, except instead of three of them, there are now four. Once that's all set and lined up, you can go ahead and tape it down. Once again, because this is rocket science, we want to make sure we're doing it right, so we've got four, 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 and four all lined up. The same goes for all of these other numbers, as well as the front-facing stars, which correspond to the stars on the 3D printed parts. Again, to prevent it from moving around, I'll put a couple more pieces of tape on the paper. Once I've done this, we'll be ready to make our drills first, and then we'll make our cuts. As it turns out, the BPS rocket cradle is extremely helpful for this next process. You're dealing with a cylinder which has a tendency to roll, and the rocket cradle does an excellent job of stopping that. Go ahead and load up a drill bit into your drill, ideally one that's a little bit smaller than the M3.5 screws. You can drill in every part that has a red dot on it. There are a lot of red dots. You will definitely have to make a lot of drills. Once you've done that, it's time to cut along the red lines. We're gonna cut a hole straight through the airframe on each red line using a small, sharp hobby knife. When cutting out the flight computer and the vectoring mount at the same time, there should be three total holes. It should be two rectangles, one big, one small, and then a kind of weird looking polygon. If you're using the TVC guide for the 66 millimeter airframe, your cutouts will be much larger. Once you've made your cutouts, and you're sure all the drills are done correctly, you can remove the paper. Your airframe is now ready for avionics integration. To get started with rocket integration, we'll first start with the TVC mount. Turn the rocket upside down and thread the TVC extension cables through the bottom, up to the top. Pull them out of the top of the rocket, and then move the TVC mount into place. Generally speaking, the cutout holes are for the servo horns, not the servos themselves. If you line the servo horns up with the holes, the mount should slide in in the correct orientation. To help make sure the mount is lined up correctly, I use a small drill bit and feed it through the airframe all the way into a screw hole in the vectoring mount. It's kind of tricky to line these things up, so this is a great way to get started with it. Once the drill bit is lined up, you can use one of the longer M3.5mm screws and secure the mount. If you're using the 66mm airframe, you'll want to use one of the smaller M3.5 screws. Now you can repeat the process with the remaining three holes in the TVC mount. 
thread the drill bit through the hole to make sure it's lined up, remove the drill bit, put in the screw, and repeat. Once you're done screwing these in, you can give a quick check to the TVC mount on the bottom. It should move freely about both axes. Before we mount the flight computer, we want to thread the TVC extension cables up through the center of the bottom bracket. Once again, we'll plug them into the right places, with Y going into the Y port, X going into the X port, and the white part of the cable facing up. For the same reasons as when we built the TVC mount, we want to mitigate all the slack in the TVC extension cabling. I like to use a couple of rubber bands here and tie them around the extra cabling. If the rubber bands aren't quite tight enough, you can fold them over themselves a couple of times, which is usually what I do. Once that's wrapped up, we'll thread the excess TVC cabling up through the top bracket in the same way we did with the bottom one. Through this whole process, you're going to want to continue pulling out all of the slack that you can. Just be careful not to disconnect the TVC cables from the flight computer in the process. Now angling the side of the computer with the SD card, power switch, and USB towards the hole in the airframe, insert the flight computer. Again, as you're doing this, make sure you're pulling all of the slack out of the TVC extension cables. Once that's in place, you can use the same method with the drill bit as you used with the TVC mount. Insert the drill bit to line up all the holes, and then screw in 8 of the M3.5 mm screws. After mounting the flight computer, I usually like to check the TVC cables one last time to make sure their connection to the computer is solid. Now it's time to turn on the computer and enter party mode. Rocket integration is now complete, and it's time to test it out to get a feel for how the computer works during flight. To get a good feel for how the rocket functions during flight, let's start by opening up the configuration file on the micro SD card. Scroll down to the part that says X axis PID values. We're going to change the XP to 0.25, the XI can stay at 0, and the XD to 0.1. We'll do the same for the Y axis PID values, and in almost every case for every rocket, these values should match up exactly. Now we can scroll down just a bit and we'll turn party mode off, again by switching the 1 to a 0. Save the file, eject the card, and let's put it back into the flight computer. While holding the rocket upright, turn the flight computer on and let it move through the startup procedure. When the green light flashes, we'll be in the pad idle mode and we'll be ready to fly. We'll simulate a launch by lifting the rocket up very quickly. The TVC system is now active and you can observe this by moving the rocket back and forth on either axis. The red and blue lights will flash, and the rocket will try to vector to keep itself upright. Jolt the rocket down to simulate burnout. The lights flash on and off for a second, indicating that the rocket has moved from unpowered flight through Apogee. When the red light turns on, the rocket will start moving flight data from the flash memory on board to the SD card. When that is complete, you'll hear the following tone. With the red light on once again, this means the data is now being erased from the flash memory, which has a faster write time and is far more reliable during flight. We have to clear the flash memory at the end of every flight to make sure that when you turn signal alpha on, it's ready to launch almost immediately. If data fails to move from the flash memory to the SD card, signal alpha won't clear the flash memory and instead will do it at the next startup. This can be especially useful in the event of a hard impact where the SD card may be accidentally ejected before the rocket has time to write all the data to it. As you can probably tell, this process takes a little while. It usually takes between 30 and 45 seconds. Which should come up right about now. Once you hear these beeps, you know that signal alpha can safely be shut down. So that's what we'll do, and then we'll turn it back on to simulate a different scenario. During this flight scenario, we'll simulate an abort by jolting the rocket to the side just after liftoff. That beep indicates that the abort criteria was violated, and under normal circumstances, the abort channel, channel 4, would also turn on. With that said, all pyro channels are actually restricted to not fire under 3 meters above ground level unless in static fire mode. There's that confirmation beep again, indicating that we've dumped all of the data from our flash memory into the SD card. We won't wait the whole time to clear the flash memory, so we'll just skip to the end of that. Once again, it's now safe to turn the rocket off. In order to be sure that we have a stable flight, we need to do a little bit more alignment on the TVC mount. Grab a motor tube of the appropriate size and slide it over top of the existing motor in the mount. 
we're essentially creating an extension of where your motor is pointed. Load the SD card back into your computer, open up the configuration file in it, and then put the vehicle back into TBC hardware alignment mode by switching that zero back to a one. Save the file, eject the card, and let's put it back into signal alpha. Like before, the rocket will boot up and hold the mount into a center position while blinking the blue light. You'll notice that our motor tube isn't quite straight. This is okay, and it's what the hardware alignment mode is for. What we'll do is change what the computer understands to be the center point of the mount. It looks like we have a little bit of misalignment on each axis, so we'll make an adjustment to each one using the xcal and ycal values in the configuration file. Once again, open it up, and under the TVC hardware alignment mode, we're going to make some changes. Either positive or negative is just fine. There's a guide in the user manual that will help you determine which kind of change you need. Save the file, eject the card, and we'll put it back in signal alpha. You'll notice that our changes have made the mount much more straight and in line with the rocket's airframe. Now the rocket understands this to be its center position, just through those small changes that we made on each axis. If you roll the rocket around, you should basically see no horizontal change in your motor mount tube. It may be worth doing this a couple of times until you feel your mount is exactly centered on the rocket's airframe. Every bit of precision we can get is better for the rocket.